Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Yeah, well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Hi, Felder. Well, hi, Tom Mascari. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm telling you, between that Felder and that Mascari, my, my listeners today are going like, whoa. Tongue twisters, but right? <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. I want my audience to know that Tom Mascari, he holds a Ph.D., and he's with S.C. Johnson. He's a senior associate etymologist, and he's here today to talk about tips on how to best protect yourself against mosquitoes this summer. Tom, this, is a big, this should be a big worry for all of us. Right, so mosquitoes are definitely a concern, and especially we hear on the news a lot about Zika and all of that, and this is a totally valid concern. Um, since there's no vaccine for Zika or anything like that right now, unfortunately, the best way to protect yourself against Zika and to protect yourself against mosquitoes are to use uh, these few tips that I'm going to talk about in a second, these three tips that I've really distilled it all down to that can help protect you and your family against mosquitoes and also against the uh, mosquito-borne diseases. Okay, and I've got some Facebook questions for you because we're live on Facebook okay. also. Go ahead. Okay, so I would say the first tip is to use a skin-applied repellent. And so what I recommend to myself, uh, to friends and family, is to use one that contains DEET or picaridin. And these are repellents that are registered with the EPA. So there's a large body of evidence showing that they actually do work to protect you against mosquitoes. So we have to do rigorous testing. We have to submit it to the EPA to get it registered. There's a lot of data showing that this stuff really works. And this is in contrast to some other repellents that there's not data. There's not the requirement to sit, submit the data to EPA. So it's kind of a buyer beware situation where you don't know when you pick one of these things off the shelf whether it's going to protect you a little bit or not at all. Um, the second tip is to think about when you're outside around mosquitoes is what you're wearing. So there is some evidence that uh, lighter colors are, make you a little bit less attractive to mosquitoes than darker colors. Um, that can protect you a little bit. It's not going to be fully protective, so don't rely upon wearing white outside to keep, you, uh, keep all the mosquitoes at bay. So that's not going to work, but it'll, it can help a little bit. Um, you can also wear, even though it's hot outside and people complain about it, you can wear long sleeve shirt, long pants. It'll keep the mosquitoes physically off of you. So you can wear something light and breezy, but that can protect you a little bit as well. And then the third tip, and this is a big one, is to make sure that you're protecting yourself in and around your home. So if you have screens on your windows, screens on your doors, um, screen porch, whatever, just make sure that those screens are intact. Make sure that you, if you have any holes in them, just patch them up. Um, and then think about your backyard right now. Especially with some of the mosquitoes that can transmit Zika, they like breeding in man-made containers. So what that means, think about your backyard again. You might have a bird bath, you might have a kiddie pool, you might have some toys, you might have some buckets you left back there. It's raining, it's picking up some water. The mosquitoes come in, they lay their eggs, the larvae hatch, you have the adults emerge, and then you have a bunch of mosquitoes in your backyard waiting to bite you. And this tip actually works really well if you work with your neighbors. Um, you can have a bigger impact on the mosquito population if you all work together to reduce the breeding sites for these mosquitoes. Okay. I'm going to take my first question, uh, well, my first statement from um, Facebook. I got Aria. Aria says that she has a compromised immune system. Would using an insect repellent be damaging to her? Okay, so I'll, I'll just start off by saying that I'm not a physician. I know. Um, I'm an entomologist, so I, I try to stay away from giving specific medical advice. So I would recommend to her that she talk to her, to her physician about that, whether or not it's appropriate to use. But I do know that um, DEET has been used for decades. It's registered with the EPA. And what we do recommend is that you follow the label instructions. And there's information um, on our website. It's scjohnson.com. And you go there and you click on mosquito info. But it'll give you information about how to properly apply repellents so that you're using them right and you can get the full protection. But again, I would, I would recommend if she has specific health concerns that she talk with her physician. That's always great advice. Mm -hmm. But you can see how uh, probably daunting this is for the general public. People do have a concern. Carlos wants to know, uh, it says on his mosquito spray, he didn't say what kind, 
it says uh, from a low percentage to a high percentage. Is that how long it will last or how strong it is? Do you know? That's, that's actually a really great, a great question. Um, so this is something, this is a point I was going to try to get in here, but he did it for me, so that's wonderful. Um, so when you're talking about DEET and picaridin particularly, um, lower concentrations mean that it'll last not quite as long. And then higher concentrations mean it'll last for a long time. So if it has DEET in it, it'll protect you against mosquitoes. So the concentration really just has to do with how long it lasts, how long you have to reapply. And so if you, knowing that information, you can really make the best decision about what product to use. If you're just going to be out in your backyard watering the plants or something, you don't need to put on something high that's going to last for 8 to 10 hours. You can just use something that will last for an hour or two. <clears throat> but if you're going to be outside all night, um, it might be good to use something with a higher concentration. But yeah, I mean, that's actually, that's a very good point to make, that it's concentration determines how long it lasts, not how well it works. Thomas Gower, you've been very, very helpful to us. Is there a place on the web, as we wrap up, that my audience can go and find out more information? You see that it is a concern. Yeah, for sure. So we have actually a really informative website. It's scjohnson.com. And once you get there, click on Mosquito Info. And what you'll find there is uh, some information about how to properly apply DEET or, or other insect repellents, um, a little bit about the science behind how they work, uh, some tips about other things you can do, maybe some myth busting going on about what does and what does not work to keep you safe. But a lot of good information there, so I recommend you check it out. Well, you gave us a lot of good information today. My guest has been Thomas Gary. He's with S.C. Johnson. He's an entomologist. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep.